My name is Suman Lahiri. I'm the regional manager of EBTC, or better known as European Business and Technology Center. And another speaker, as you can see, Mr. Sudip Todam, a general manager from Monergy, an experienced person in the area of rural business. EBTC is an EU initiative and is supporting technology transfer from the European Union to India and addresses climate change problems to clean technology applications. Cutting across four sectors of energy, environment, biotechnology and transportation in the two domains of business and research. In this webinar, we will present the issues of Indian rural electrification and discuss implementation. I will briefly highlight the key policies, issues and touch upon two cases, while my friend Sudipta will discuss in depth the practical aspects of implementation. Please engage and you need to engage with him to know the practical aspects of rural energy access. If you have any question after seeing this webinar, listening to this webinar, please do write me at lahiri at ebtc.eu and for Sudipto, you will be, you are being ensured that your questions will reach him and you can get the answers back from me or him directly. With this, let us come to the main portion, the first portion is why India. As you can see, there is a huge, this is a huge market with 55.3% of the rural households with no access to electricity when we are speaking about a population of 1.2 billion and 85% of the rural population is dependent on traditional biomass for cooking. With a projected GDP of 6.8 percent till 2030, this indeed is a huge opportunity. And we can see the growing and emerging interests of IFC and also other venture capitalists for investing in clean energy, especially in clean tech or clean technology. And just to touch upon what EBTC is, I have mentioned about its sectoral expertise, but it has also a geographic spread across India. That gives EBTC a strength in terms of networking with the social capital as well as understanding the Indian scenario well. And EBTC is also a nodal point of the European Enterprise Network. So briefly, we can say that in India there are four service delivery models. One is grid connected, the other is not connected to the grid. When we speak not connected to the grid, Sudipto will discuss more about the distributed rural energy access and we will see it in a short while. The government policies are in place right from the Electricity Act, there is national electricity policy, national tariff policy and also the FDI policy because it's important when we are talking about opportunities for foreign companies, the FDI should be in place. When we talk about government schemes, there are mainly two schemes, the RGGVY and under that DDG, the Distributed Dis Distribution Program and Remote Village Electrification. The recent Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission is also addressing issues of rural electrification while there are multiple other small schemes under the MNRE. Scheme of CSIR 800 where I was talking to my friend Sudipta that um, CSIR is actually will provide a good housing, affordable health, sustainable energy to 800 million people and they will adopt a village. It will adopt village where we can actually bring in European technology which can be sustainable for the rural application and with a local partner like Ono and Sudipto can speak on them at length in the next few minutes. The state development renewable agencies which do provide it opportunities for energy access and there are private initiatives standing alone like Selco they are doing very well and also the CISR that is the corporate social responsibility policy which has some mandates to expand for uh, rural uh, business and rural development. But this is all called the new types of capabilities to do business in areas which are quite different from the urban customer. Well, these are some of the new, uh, new existing institutes where it will be interesting for some of you to actually approach the website of MNRE and Ministry of Power to know more about the policies. Well, the key issues of off-grid energy access I will just point on 
the important points that the business model, it needs a different sort of business models which are actually important to be implemented. The energy access uh, uh, business in across different parts of India, one structure also does not fit well. And financing is another important issue which is driving the success of such initiatives because one knows that the return is not very high from such type of models. Said that, I will just touch upon two models of of great business model basically government scheme where Chhattisgarh, one of the states of India, is successful in providing micro grids to village in the sense of 14 or 46 villages and then they were speaking in 2011 that they will be electrifying 654 remaining villages and their main success factors were maintenance. Everything was provided free to the villages but they were an excellent maintenance system and that is one of the reasons to sustain the systems. And Selco, as I was mentioning, it was a private initiative but the main success factor was business model and innovation. The pricing, the distribution, the affordability of the products, understanding the consumer needs, well networked with the banks and the social capital all together they have been successful at energies is a similar type of organizing a social enterprise which will in the next few minutes explain how they have dealt with the issues in the world electrification. Say that there's a large market but there are certainly some issues but the government schemes are actually the drivers of rural electrification which can be complemented by the private players because forget not, India is a large country yeah, 3 million square kilometers with coast to coast distance of 8,000 kilometers, a diverse culture, a different type of, uh, you know, earning capacity across villages, different tests. But it can be met happen, and EBTC is well poised to support the EU companies. Now I would like to hand over the session to my friend Sulipta, who will discuss in depth what are the challenges, what are the issues of doing business in rural India, especially in the energy access. So, please. Thank you, Shruvan, uh, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, thank you for having us uh, over at uh, for this webinar, and uh, we are delighted to uh, talk about our experience in rural electrification in uh, in, in India, but largely in uh, the eastern part of India. Uh, uh, slightly uh, a brief view about Onergy. We are a social enterprise uh, established in 2009, providing decentralized energy solutions to rural households in the eastern Indian states of Jharkhand, Orissa, and West Bengal. Mm. As uh, Shuman was mentioning, uh, the basic uh, problem that we are trying to address is the lack of energy access in rural India which has afflicted uh, progress and uh, West Bengal, Jharkhand and Wisa uh, although you know it has 16 percent of uh, Indian population has a growth rate of uh, GDP rate of uh, around 3, uh, 3 percent which shows that uh, uh, and this is because largely because of uh, lack of infrastructural uh, access and energy being one of them. The, uh, Challenges towards uh, uh, dealing with distributed solar energy in rural areas uh, includes uh, the, uh, creating the access, uh, the distribution channel, the creating the awareness for the products, having the affordable and the appropriate technology which uh, would uh, suit the rural households and also providing the uh, technology support the after sale support which will enable uh, uh, the rural households to continue to use and experience the solar products which they purchase. These are the largely the challenges uh, that have been uh, uh, that you that we see in these areas. So what uh, energy does basically is uh, this is our business model. Uh, what we do is uh, we create an ecosystem which 
facilitates the uptake of uh, uh, solar energy, off-grid solar energy in rural areas. And uh, the ecosystem consists of creating awareness and training, uh, having uh, the appropriate product at the correct prices for the uh, households, providing the kind of service and uh, support that uh, creates trust uh, amongst the consumers and also uh, it creates trust uh, with the banks which are a major player in this ecosystem as uh, they are the, uh, the, the bank managers are the people who uh, give out loans to the rural customers for buying the solar products and almost uh, 70 to 80 percent of the products that we sell in the rural market is financed through banks. And, uh, so this is what we do and uh, our model is uh, through the setting up of renewable energy centers. We, we set up renewable energy centers uh, in the rural areas, close to the rural areas. These renewable energy centers uh, are places from which uh, we operate in that area. We uh, develop rural entrepreneurs. We uh, tie up uh, with many. We have tied up with. A, we work with a lot of NGOs and MFI is working in that region. We train uh, their beneficiaries or their workers in how to go about uh, marketing solar products. We provide these entrepreneurs the advertising support to go into the market and sell the products. And then uh, uh, once the once the, once the customer uh, is ready to buy, we uh, we help them out with the uh, loan processing. Most of the products they buy is through banks, and we help them out with the loan processing. Uh, of course, uh, the after sales support is very much a part of what uh, uh, we do. We're coming to the kind of products that we deal with. Uh, we have products uh, ranging from small lights, which is uh, uh, small lights and lanterns. Then we have uh, the home lighting system, which is uh, from 20 watt to 200 watt. We, uh, we also consists of the inverter-based uh, systems and micro solar plants, which we put up, uh, which we are increasingly working on. And uh, uh, we also have uh, the solar water heaters, the thermal solutions. Uh, apart from the normal heating and lighting uh, products, we also are uh, experimenting and uh, doing projects on. Uh, we have launched our own solar ICT centers, which is basically the information and communication leverages the information and communication technology. It's powered by solar, and we are able to install these at very remote locations, which do not have energy access. Apart from that, yes, we are doing a lot of solar irrigation projects. We also have a project going on. Which is uh, about solar microscope grid, where we are trying to develop the supply chain uh, for fruits and vegetables, creating direct market linkages between the farmers and the, uh, uh, and the market, where uh, micro cold storage facility powered by solar at the last mile uh, enables the farmers to have greater control over prices for their produce. And uh, uh, in terms of uh, Operations, we are in eastern states of Jharkhand, uh, Uesa and West Bengal. We have 12 renewable energy centers right now uh, spread over uh, this area. And we are planning to uh, ramp up to 40, uh, 46 centers by uh, 2016. The channels for uh, the, the purchase includes cash and bank and uh, we have MFI partners uh, uh, in certain areas and also, of course, institutional uh, sector, which uh, deals largely with uh, microgrids and uh, irrigation projects and uh, CSR projects. Uh, you see out here that uh, we, we're probably the uh, first company who has uh, gone into rural areas with a marketing, uh, with an advertising campaign for uh, uh, solar energy. And this has paid us uh, rich dividends. Uh, these are the various innovative marketing tools uh, that we use, starting from village level demos to uh, uh, you know, uh, what we call mobile micing and wall paintings. We hold a lot of cultural shows. 
uh, street theaters uh, and uh, cultural other cultural events uh, which uh, creates awareness about solar energy and uh, uh, creates a strong energy brand also. Uh, we are very strong in our service management. Uh, we, our, our technicians are trained. Uh, our trainer is from is a very renowned uh, solar person and uh, personality in solar technology in the world. He's from France, and uh, we have a, a, a quite a comprehensive com customer education program about maintenance and uh, uh, upkeep of uh, systems. Um, and uh, all our rural entrepreneurs who we train are also trained about uh, the service and installation. Uh, we have a strong uh, local level uh, technical team who uh, uh, are able to respond to service uh, requests within 48 hours, 48 hours of uh, the request, which helps us to bring uh, build a strong brand in this area. And, uh, this is about uh, what we do in terms of process management. We have, uh, of course, we have uh, ramped up, uh, scaled up uh, very st uh, steeply in the last year. Uh, we've uh, gone up from a 16-member team to right now we are a 75-member team, and that has required us to put in very strong processes, which we have done. We've uh, leveraged uh, the cloud-based uh, uh, technologies and mobile app, Android-based mobile application for uh, real-time communication with our field force. So our, our, our team and uh, Vinayat and Piyush, uh, of course, founders of Onergy, and uh, Piyush is uh, currently the uh, CEO of Onergy, uh, uh, and we have uh, uh, Swetha who heads our communication section, and uh, Alok Piri who is uh, heading our marketing section. Our impact so far, we have offset uh, large amounts of carbon emission. Almost 4,000 tons of carbon emission has been offset in. Uh, of course, we've covered more than 1,000 villages now, and um, in fact, 1.2 lakhs, and uh, trained over 1,000 uh, uh, rural entrepreneurs, uh, most of whom are active uh, uh, on the field. And, uh, what we're targeting is, of course, uh, ramping up our uh, uh, operations significantly. By 2016, we intend to add uh, we are currently at 12 uh, uh, renewable energy centers. We want to go up to 47. Uh, in terms of villages and lives impacted, which is our mission, is to impact 1 million lives by 2016. Of course, that would mean improving our uh, outreach, having more grassroots partners, uh, training more rural entrepreneurs, which would inevitably lead to an increase in our team size, and uh, of course, the revenue and uh, loss of uh, other carbon. Footprint. Uh, we are very lucky to have with us uh, very committed and uh, involved partners. Uh, we are uh, incubated by Selco, supported by the Swedish International Development Authority, ETC Netherlands, GIZ. Uh, 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 Grameen banks or rural banks have been very forthcoming in their support for our uh, distribution program and they have extended excellent support. In all the states, uh, we uh, we are also very lucky to have IIM Kolkata and IIM Ahmedabad as our knowledge partner, and they contribute significantly in our uh, process development and strategy formulation. And uh, these are various things uh, which I have been discussing this morning. We I look forward to hearing from you in ways we can collaborate in terms of technology transfer, in terms of knowledge transfer terms of doing joint projects for testing new models. Uh, uh, of course, we are uh, we're very happy to uh, have uh, uh, funding coming through, which will help us to uh, scale up our operations and uh, make this journey uh, an extremely successful and a meaningful one for rural sustainable rural development. So uh, with that, I thank you all for being a part of this uh, uh, presentation, and I look forward to hearing from you with your questions. Thank you very much.